The movie begins by introducing Dave Giorno and his two friends, Keith Morrison and Ned Hastings, who are members of the Green Street elite. They end up in prison after a fight that resulted in their comrade Pete's death. While in prison and they getting ready for activities in the prison yard with other inmates, Dave and his friends encounter a group of Chelsea Football Club supporters. This leads to a confrontation, with both groups provoking each other until they start fighting. Prison officers intervene to stop the fight and arrest Dave and his friends, considering them the ones who started the brawl. Following the earlier incident, Dave and his friends are transferred to a different prison, where they encounter Mark Turner and his fellow Millwall Football Club supporters known as the Bushwalkers. Mark attempts to intimidate Dave and his friends, warning them to behave or face more trouble. This threat angers Dave and his friends, almost leading to a fight with Mark. Fortunately, prison guards intervene and take them to meet the prison governor, who advises them to avoid causing any more trouble. After the inmates leave, the chief guard, Veronica Mavis, discusses with the prison governor the idea of adding more guards for better monitoring, but due to budget constraints, the governor rejects the proposal. Meanwhile, Dave and his friends relax in the prison yard, where they are approached by an inmate named Max, a Russian football club supporter. Max expresses that he has been expecting Dave and knows some details about him, suggesting that they can collaborate if they face any issues in the prison. On the other hand, one of Mark's henchmen, Joss, is seen carrying out his duty of collecting trash in the area where the guards work. During this time, Veronica discreetly tosses a suspicious envelope into her trash bin, which Joss is responsible for cleaning. Surprisingly, Veronica is secretly collaborating with Mark to smuggle cigarettes and drugs into the prison, and Joss is the courier who delivers these items to Mark's group. After inspecting the discarded envelope, Joss quickly conceals it and completes his task of cleaning the guard's trash. Meanwhile, an inmate named Hages goes berserk in his cell, leading the guards to intervene and subdue him. When Dave and the others attempt to investigate the situation, Mason, an on-duty prison guard, prevents them and directs them to go to the cafeteria for mealtime. Shifting our focus to another one of Mark's henchmen, Derek, he is in Mark's cell, providing him with two packs of cigarettes and some money he has acquired. Upon seeing the insufficient amount of money and cigarettes, Mark becomes furious with Derek and nearly assaults him. However, their confrontation is interrupted when Joss arrives with a package of drugs supplied by Veronica. Joss promptly hands over the package to Mark, who proceeds to inspect it, ensuring none of his henchmen have taken anything. Sometime later, Dave and his friends attended a sermon in the prison chapel, hoping for a moment of peace. Unfortunately, their peace was shattered when Mark and his gang entered the chapel and sat right behind them. Dave, anticipating trouble from Mark, urged Ned and Keith to remain calm, reminding them that the church was not the place for a brawl. However, just before leaving, Mark, who sat behind Ned, suddenly kicked him in the face, causing Ned to bleed. Frustrated by Mark's unfair actions, Dave and his friends retaliated, resulting in a fight inside the chapel. Shortly thereafter, prison guards rushed in to break up the fight. Strangely, Mark faced no consequences for inciting the fight as Veronica chose not to punish him, despite his role in the altercation. Meanwhile, Dave and his friends were arrested and escorted back to their cells. Dave attempted to defend their actions to Mason, explaining that they were outnumbered by Mark's group and highlighting Veronica's collaboration with Mark, which allowed his gang to evade punishment. On another occasion, Dave's girlfriend, Red, came to visit him in prison to discuss their relationship. After a chat, Red bid Dave farewell, unaware that Mark had been secretly observing her arrival. Meanwhile, Veronica issued orders to her subordinates to release Hages from solitary confinement and return him to his cell once his punishment had been served. At the same time, in his cell, Mark was concocting a harmful substance. Shortly afterward, he and his henchmen forcefully entered Heavey's cell and splashed the corrosive substance onto his face. Meanwhile, Veronica approached Max, who was exercising with his group, to strike a deal. She cautioned Max against aiding Dave and his friends if he wished to avoid trouble within the prison. Furthermore, she increased Max's weekly security payment to her to $300. Shortly after, 
a pizza delivery person arrived at the prison to fulfill an order. One of the prison guards promptly delivered the pizza to Veronica, who had placed the request. After her subordinate left, she discreetly inspected the underside of the pizza, discovering several packets of drugs, which she hastily concealed before anyone else could notice. In the prison dining hall, Mark plotted to frame Keith for causing a disturbance. As a result, several guards restrained Keith and took him to the office of the prison governor. Veronica consistently accused Keith of being the instigator, leading the reluctant prison governor to punish Keith by placing him in solitary confinement. Dave and Ned hurriedly approached Mason, who was on the field, and asked him to keep an eye on Keith in solitary confinement because they feared that Mark might harm him. Meanwhile, Mark entered another section of the prison where Max and his group often gathered for exercise. When one of Max's members taunted Mark, he brutally attacked the inmate, shocking the other prisoners. A few hours later, Mark and his henchmen attempted to harm Keith in solitary confinement. Fortunately, Mason spotted Mark through the surveillance cameras, and the prison guard thwarted Mark's malicious plan against Keith. However, Veronica, who consistently defended Mark, persisted in justifying his actions, causing Mason to lose his patience and begin defying her orders. On the sidelines of the field, Dave watched a football match played by Max's group and became curious about the sign language they used while on the field. Meanwhile, the prison governor ordered Veronica and Mason to document all the violence carried out by inmates in the prison. Veronica, as the chief guard, complied with the order. However, once the prison governor left, she reminded Mason not to interfere with Mark and his group if he wanted to continue working in the prison. Reluctantly, Mason followed Veronica's command. In their cell, Ned shared that his girlfriend, Lucy, had broken up with him, and Dave tried to comfort him during his sadness. On another occasion, Ned's friend, Terry, visited him in prison. With a bruised face, Terry informed Ned about the cost of sending goods to the prison, which he would do the next day. The following day, Keith seemed to have been released from solitary confinement, so Dave and Ned quickly went to the chapel for Keith to join them. After sitting together, Dave surprised Keith with a drink that had been smuggled into the prison using a book. Keith looked pleased with the thoughtful gift from his friends. After finishing the drink, the three of them returned to their cells. In the restroom, Derek was seen preparing a sharp weapon. He and Joss suddenly entered the cell where Dave and others were staying and launched an attack on Ned, who was alone and resting. In the attack, Derek injured Ned's face with the weapon he had readied earlier. Realizing the harm done, Derek and Joss left the cell. Shortly after, Dave and Keith arrived, and they were shocked by Ned's condition. Dave quickly called Mason, who was on duty, and asked about the person responsible for monitoring the prison's surveillance cameras, allowing such an attack to go unnoticed. Mason then went to see Veronica, who was in charge of the surveillance cameras in the prison. He informed her that Ned had been injured in his cell after being attacked by other inmates. Veronica seemed unconcerned and casually stated that violence in the prison was common. Not long after, Ned had finally received medical treatment in the prison. When Mason arrived, Dave left Ned's treatment room and shared his suspicions about Veronica. He believed she deliberately allowed Mark and his henchmen to do as they pleased and that as long as she remained chief guard, a certain group would control the prison. During lunchtime, Dave discussed their plan to retaliate against Mark's henchmen while eating with Keith. Meanwhile, Joss continued his duty of collecting trash in the guards area, unaware that Mason was watching him closely. Joss found an envelope among the trash, but to his surprise, it was empty. On the other hand, Dave went to the prison yard to meet Max and asked him about areas in the prison without surveillance cameras so he could start planning his retaliation against those who had attacked Ned. Meanwhile, Mark approached Joss in a hidden spot to inspect the package he usually received. When he found the package empty, Mark warned Joss that he'd face harm if he was lying. Later, Mark inquired with Veronica about the usual package she provided, and she admitted to smuggling items as usual by disposing of the package in the trash that Joss collected. In a corridor, Derek was suddenly grabbed by Keith and Dave, who took him to an area without surveillance cameras. They proceeded to beat Derek until he lost consciousness. 
After ensuring Derek was defenseless, Dave and Keith left and waited in the field. Ned, who had finished his treatment, approached them and learned that Derek had been taken to the infirmary. Dave admitted to beating Derek in retaliation for Derek's attack on Ned earlier. On another occasion, they went to the prison kitchen and severely injured Joss. Shortly afterward, Mark entered the kitchen and found Joss defenseless, assuming Dave was responsible. Without hesitation, Mark approached Dave, who was exercising, but Dave headbutted Mark, causing a commotion. When the guards arrived, Dave tried to remain calm to avoid being blamed for the disturbance, while Mark was arrested for causing trouble. That night, while Dave and his friends were preparing to rest, Veronica suddenly entered their cell for an inspection, hoping to find reasons to punish them. Despite finding nothing except a letter from Dave's girlfriend, she still decided to place Dave and his friends in solitary confinement as punishment. While in the monitoring room, Mason observed Veronica's actions closely. The following day, Mark secretly entered solitary confinement to attack Dave while he was asleep. This led to a brawl between them until the guards arrived and separated them, leaving both of them badly injured. Veronica immediately reported the incident to the prison governor, but he didn't seem very interested in her explanation, as he wanted to read the official report about the fight between Dave and Mark. The prison governor also instructed Mason to keep a close watch on Dave to prevent any similar incidents. Sometime later, after Dave was released from solitary confinement, he met with Mason on the field and asked for the prison guard's assistance in exposing Veronica's misconduct, which had gone too far. Mason agreed that they needed to start resisting her actions. In the following meeting, Veronica and Mason joined the prison governor, who requested a list of 60 inmates suitable for release, individuals who wouldn't cause trouble after leaving prison. Veronica observed the prisoners on the field and jotted down some names, which she submitted to the prison governor. However, her list didn't meet his approval as he considered some inmates still too risky for release. Mason then presented his own list, which the prison governor favored. This list included Dave and his friends. Veronica interrupted and suggested Mark and his two friends for release. As a solution, the prison governor proposed a football match between Dave's team and Mark's team. The winning team would earn their freedom. The next morning, Mason informed Dave and his friends about the upcoming football match that could secure their release. Afterward, Dave met with Red, who visited him and expressed hope for his soon released from the prison. Meanwhile, Mark's henchmen, who were not imprisoned, paid Red a visit. Observing Red visiting Dave, Mark ordered his henchmen to abduct her. During the day, Dave and his friends practiced football diligently, while some of Mark's henchmen carried out the plan to abduct Red from her home. While Dave and his friends were having lunch, Mark unexpectedly showed up and requested a private conversation with Dave. Dave followed Mark to a room where Mark handed him a phone connected to his henchman who held Red captive. Mark made a chilling demand, asking Dave to intentionally lose the football match if he wanted Red to remain unharmed. Sometime later, Dave went to the field and sought Max's assistance in contacting Terry to inform him about Mark's henchman kidnapping Red at her home. Max discreetly used a smuggled phone to reach Terry, and upon learning of Red's situation, Terry assured that he would take care of it. Back in the prison, the football match between Dave's team and Mark's team began. However, Dave couldn't muster enthusiasm for the game as he worried about Red still in captivity. Meanwhile, Red grew more fearful as Mark's henchmen closed in on her, but Terry and his associates arrived in the nick of time to rescue her. Max received the message indicating Red's safe rescue and sent a coded signal. Dave finally started playing with determination, and his team emerged victorious. Mark, frustrated by the loss, contacted his henchmen, who had failed in their attempt to abduct Red, as Terry and his associates had foiled their plan. Shortly after, the prison governor arrived to arrest Mark and Veronica, who had collaborated in smuggling drugs into the prison. As the film concluded, Dave and his friends were released from prison, expressing their gratitude to Max for his support during their time behind bars. They all gathered at Dave's home, where Red, Terry, and their friends had come together to celebrate their newfound freedom. Moral lesson from the story, life is like a game of football. Sometimes you gotta pass the ball of truth, dodge the defenders of trouble, 
and score goals of friendship to win the match of freedom.